it's really important to make sure that you have that balance in your day so that you can get work done while at the same time having spots allocated for the other tasks that are required of you when running a business. You're listening to The Successful Bookkeeper with your host, Michael Palmer. Listen each week as inspiring guests share their secrets of success to help you increase your confidence, work smarter, and build a business you love. This episode of The Successful Bookkeeper is brought to you by purebookkeeping.com, the proven system to grow your bookkeeping business. Welcome back to the Successful Bookkeeper Podcast. I am your host, Michael Palmer, and today's show is going to be an inspiring one. Our guest is a CPA from Florida who owns Gerstenfeld and Company and is a member of the Accelerate to Advisor community with Lisa Campbell, and he's also a pure bookkeeping licensee, Bruce Gerstenfeld. Welcome to the show. Hi, Michael. Thank you very much for having me today. It's great to have you, and I'm so excited to hear your story and get into some of your journey and what your business has been like over these years. And so before we get into all of that, Bruce, tell us a little bit about you and what you've been up to leading up to this point. So I'm a little bit of an unusual case in that I came to accounting as a second career. I spent 20 years in IT and digital marketing before making the decision to shift gears and move over to accounting and pursue my license as a certified public accountant. I came out of college with a gr- undergraduate degree in telecommunication, which is a fancy way of saying broadcast journalism. But I came out of college during Y2K and was offered a job as a software engineer, which led me down that first path of my career. I became pretty strong with databases, and that resulted in me being picked up for the digital marketing department as those started to grow because I was able to analyze the customer data and find the right people to receive messages at the right time. Unfortunately, I found that career to be a little boring after 20 years and woke up one morning and decided I was going to apply to go back to school for a second master's degree in accounting so that I could pursue the CPA license. I didn't tell anybody. My wife found out about it after I actually filled out the application Once I was accepted into the program, I didn't tell anyone at work. I kept it pretty contained between myself, my family, and my closest friends. And nobody actually knew that I had graduated until the day it happened. Wow. That's amazing. And what what was the response? The first response I got at work was a lot of questions. The biggest question I got was, well, how much longer are you going to be here? A lot of people realized that I was going to pursue a completely different path and that they weren't sure how it fit into the corporate environment where we currently were residing. Wow. And and this is, you know, Y2K and going through all of that, you're working a full-time job, you're going to school. It must have been challenging. It it did have challenges. So not only was I working full time, I was essentially going to school full time because the program was six credits every eight weeks. So 12 credits every semester. So that's a full time student. I was also married and had two children at home. And I managed to coach their soccer teams during soccer season while I was doing it. So somehow I managed my time to the point that I could get to and from work, which was about an hour and a half commute each way, and get home in time for games and practices on days where I didn't have school. I actually selected my practice days based around the days that I had class so that I wouldn't have to miss anything. Wow. That that's crazy. That really is crazy. That that is, I mean, it's a stack of a stack of a stack of a stack. I'm curious about that. How did you make all of that work? Because full-time job, full-time school, full-time family, and also coaching your kids' sports teams. And you commuted an hour and a half each way. 
So what I did initially was I changed the way in which I commuted. Originally, I would drive. Then I discovered the the express commuter bus. So what I would do is instead of using an hour and a half of my time driving, I would use an hour and a half of my drive time studying. That was actually how I studied for the CPA exams. I bought myself a larger phone so that I could do practice exams while I was sitting on the bus and would have three hours of study time in before I ever got back home from work during the day. So I really only had to worry about studying in the evenings after my my daughters went to sleep so that I didn't interfere with the family time. I, I made a conscious decision that I had to prioritize my family above all else if I was truly going to succeed at this because I needed them as my support system. And through it, what what was it like for your family? Like you were doing all of these things and and studying and, uh, you know, your mind, it would have been interesting. I mean, I just think of my life today. I have a young family. I have you know, business running. There's lots of things going on, sports, all that good stuff. I know how I go through it. It's not always pretty. How was it for you and, and your family going through that? So I'm very lucky in that I have a patient wife. We've been together since we were in college. So uh, we're approaching 29 years together as a couple, almost 25 years married. So she's very tolerant of what I do most of the time. My daughters must have learned that from her because they were also extremely patient with me. I think to a certain extent that my pursuits also benefited them because my daughters both became outstanding students in school. We're actually going through the second process of college applications right now. And I'm amazed at the schools that she has applied to because they're clearly not schools that would have been on my radar as a, as a high school student because I was pretty lazy in high school, unlike my children. We'll get back to the interview right after this word from our sponsor. Is this the year you go from accountant or bookkeeper to people advisor? Gusto is on a mission to give every accountant and bookkeeper the skills and resources they need to support their clients well beyond their finances. Sure, Gusto provides an incredibly easy to use modern payroll system, but on top of that, you can offer integrated benefits, hiring and onboarding tools, performance management, time tracking, and so much more. And if you're saying, but I'm not qualified to talk about benefits or I don't know how to provide HR support, Gusto offers certified people advisory training along with CPE credits for free. There's even an accelerator program that teaches you how to package and monetize these new services so you can grow your firm and increase your revenue. Get this, Gusto is so sure you're going to love their platform, they'll set you up with free payroll and HR for your own firm. Sign up today and get client HR tools, exclusive discounts, plus free payroll for your firm by going to gusto.com forward slash the successful bookkeeper. That's gusto.com forward slash the successful bookkeeper. Thank you for hearing from our sponsor. Now let's get back to the interview. Wow. So the you, you actually ended up being an incredible role model, perhaps, and built the the conditioning and the muscle strength or whatever they, they call that when it comes to actually the discipline, I guess you could say, of, of being great students. So there's some really great outcomes that have happened. And and it just like just sitting here listening to your story, you you that was that was really something you had to take on something massive here to do this and the motivation to do that what do you think your motivation like where was that what was the driving force to get all of that done uh in your life like was there something specific was it like you know you just you couldn't stand what you were doing you mentioned you didn't like what you were doing or you weren't passionate about it anymore it was boring for you but you know a lot of people are bored at the job. A lot of people are, you know, not completely happy. But to take this on, it's like you—you you took on the I'm going to climb, climb Mount Everest, you know, through a through a winter storm route here. I think it stems back to childhood. When I was really little, I used to tell people I wanted to be like my father. 
So my father is a CPA. I also have a maternal uncle that's a CPA. My maternal grandfather was an accountant. It was in my blood. So I always knew somewhere in the back of my mind that this is where I really belonged. But I went down a different path because at the time I came out of high school, things weren't always great for my dad in the field. Um, He had owned his own company for many years. He sold that company and then went to work for other people, ultimately working at another firm before finally reestablishing himself in his own firm again here in Florida in 1992. So there was about a six year period where he was working for other people. So the the image I had in my mind of what a CPA was and what a CPA did had shifted. And so I decided to pursue something completely different. But it always sat in the back of my mind, knowing that every test that I had ever taken suggested that that truly should have been my path. I, I felt like I had missed on something. I had always had the entrepreneurial spirit. I had even attempted to go into business for myself previously about 10 years into my career where I dropped everything and bought into a franchise organization. That didn't work out very well for a variety of reasons. So I ultimately went back to work, but it just sat there in the back of my mind. And I think in a fit of frustration one day with just being part of being a cog for somebody else's business, helping them make money where I was kind of fixed in what I could actually achieve and earn and become through that just made me want to do this even more and more. So it really created that inner drive that I needed to make all of this happen and make it happen without sacrificing anything along the way. Hmm. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, It's interesting to hear everyone's journey and I'm a firm believer that the the whether you go off track or you, you you stay on track, you're always gaining knowledge and experience that will be helpful down the track. And so, uh, I'm sure that those those things will reveal themselves as you're going through your new career and this you know being where you it sounds like you're meant to be. I am curious about the franchise business. And what you learned from that, like what were the things that went wrong and what were the takeaways from that? Sure. So number one, I learned that even though I had all of the academic credentials in the world that I could possibly need, I still didn't know how to run a business, even when someone gave me the list of instructions. I learned it was very difficult to become a salesperson when that really wasn't where you resided in your career. I was, I was in the back room in IT growing like a mushroom in the dark. I didn't have to get out there and see people. I didn't have to force myself into some sort of extroverted world. So selling became a new challenge that maybe I wasn't ready for at that point. I also did it at a time where the economy collapsed about six months into it. So (laughs) the, the timing was kind of poor. Uh, I don't like to blame that though, because I think that's a cop out to blame the bad economy because you can succeed in any economy if you have the right business model and the drive to make it work. Very cool. Well, those are great, a great analogy. And I agree with you. The, some of the best businesses in the, in the world started in a recession, but there's a lot of factors. You said a lot of them. I mean, you, you nailed really clearly. And I think that's half the battle for our listener, it's, it's like looking at a failure and saying, oh, failure, I don't want to think about it. I don't want to look at it. You've obviously thought very clearly about what worked, what didn't work. And then how have you taken those, those learnings into what you're doing today? So today, a lot of what I do is utilize technology to make businesses more efficient. So I don't look at the world through a typical accounting lens. I don't want to just do debits and credits, make sure everything is tick tied and balanced. I want to see my business owners succeed to their level of dreams. So it really requires more insight than just helping them with their compliance. When I get clients that really just look at me and say, I just want to get my taxes done and done with me paying the minimum. That doesn't tell me enough about what their dreams really are, because to me, taxes are really just a consequence of earning a living. 
personally, I'm happy to pay more taxes because paying more taxes means I've made more money. And if I've made more money, there's more in my pocket. I explained to them that if even if you're taxed at the highest possible rate in cap in capital gains of 40 percent, you're still keeping 60 cents of every dollar. Would you rather have 60 cents in your pocket or would you rather have zero in your pocket? I jokingly tell them that I keep a tip jar in the corner of my office if they'd like to throw the 60 cents in there because I'll gladly take it and bring their deductions all the way to match their income. (laughs) What do they say when you do that? Usually it gets a response of crickets as they think about what I'm really saying. And then they realize that they don't want to actually pay me more money so that I can pay the taxes. They'll be happy to pay the taxes themselves. (laughs) Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Now you, you started your business. You, you went through school. Did you go right into business after the, tell us a little bit about that transition period to I'm working in the IT world. I've, I've graduated and now I'm going into business. So I did a dual role for many years. I graduated with my accounting degree in 2014. I then proceeded to work part-time with my father for the next couple of years. So between 2000, actually it was longer than that. Between 2014 and 2019, I really worked part-time with him because You need 2,080 hours under supervision of a certified public accountant in your jurisdiction in order to get your license. So I didn't really want to walk away from my full-time, reasonably well-paying job until I had my license. So between 2016 and 2018, I really became serious about tracking the hours and made sure that I got those 2,000 hours. Then I applied for the license and received it. I still didn't pull the trigger on on leaving the corporate job. I waited another year until 2019. Then because my father has an existing practice, I was able to join up with him in tandem so that we can build the practice together. But of course, he's at an age where he could retire when he's ready. So essentially, I'm now a succession plan. Wow, that's great. And so you, you worked up to this point, you have your you're working in the your father's with your father, your partner with your father, your, as you say, the succession plan, you had a couple of other challenges in the franchise business selling was one of the big ones that i'm sure our listener right now is saying hey wait a second that's like me uh i don't like to sell or i I, you know i relate to the mushroom growing in the dark um how have you how have you transformed or have you transformed that area of your life around selling i think the trick for me was finding what i was passionate about doing I'm much more passionate about selling the business, the value that you can achieve from your business, the the means to achieve your goals, financial, family, whatever it is that you're looking for. I find it much easier to sell that than the service that I was selling in the franchise business. There was There was no passion to the franchise for me. It was just a means to an end. Whereas for this, I feel like I have something of significance to offer somebody and it really gets them to their end goals, their dreams. And that's much easier to sell. It doesn't feel like selling anymore when you're giving somebody exactly what they want. Mm. So true. So true. Bruce, another piece of your story that continually comes up is, is the importance of being in command of your calendar. How have you been able to manage everything that there is going on in your business, in your life, in your family? Uh, how How does that all work for you? So you mentioned at the start that I'm a part of Lisa Campbell's A to A program. And one of the components that we learn about with her is how to properly time block our schedules. While I was learning about that, I realized to a certain extent I was already doing it. I just hadn't codified how I was really doing it. It wasn't done in my calendar. It wasn't done on paper and pencil. It was really done in my mind. 
So I knew, for example, that I was going to get on the bus at seven o'clock in the morning every day to commute from my home in northern Broward County to to Miami, which is the hour and a half commute. So I would leave my house at 630 in the morning. That would get me to the bus stop in time to catch the bus. So I knew that that 7 to 8.30-ish time frame was really going to be dedicated to studying. And then from 9 to about 5.30 would be dedicated to work, uh, whatever tasks I had assigned by my corporate overlords. And then at 5.30, depending on what day it was, I would either have to leave to go back to the bus to go home, which would result in another hour and a half of studying, or I would be going to further downtown Miami where the campus was for my classes and I would spend the next four hours there. So the time was already blocked for me. I I just was able to manipulate the pieces that I needed. So if I knew that I had to be home for a soccer game, I wouldn't take the bus that day. I would drive to Miami and they've installed express lanes, which cost a small fortune. I would pay about $10 to get home that night, but I would spend the $10 to make sure that I was home in time for the soccer games because my kids and time with them and coaching them and watching them play was worth far more to me than the $10 was ever going to be worth. So I would, I would do that. And, and gradually over time, I started to solidify this system And really, I do that in my everyday life now to this day where I come in at the same time every day. The first thing I do is I check to see if there's any emails or voicemail messages from the evening before after I left. I take care of those. I put those into proper slots to make sure I either handle them now because they're emergency or later when I have time to deal with them. And then I move on to the client work that I have to do. Or then I block time to handle prospect calls so that I don't have people calling me all day long looking to schedule time with me. It's really important to make sure that you have that balance in your day so that you can get work done while at the same time having spots allocated for the other tasks that are required of you when running a business. We'll get back to the interview right after this word from our partners. How many of you are making data-driven decisions about your bookkeeping business? Cinder can save you from doing manual data entry from multiple sales channels and automatically generate an accurate P&L report, balance sheet, and inventory management for your business needs. A few clicks and you'll get access to the key metrics to find the hidden streams of income for your client's business. Use coupon code EASYBOOKS for up to 40% off from the start and only for our listeners who click the link in the description, Cinder has prepared an actionable business checklist for your success in 2022. Excited? Get free access now on cinder.me forward slash successful bookkeeper. That's S-Y-N-D-E-R dot me forward slash successful bookkeeper. Are you struggling to secure the right clients? Are you frustrated that prospects are not seeing your value? Well, It's time to change that. Introducing the Convert with Value workshop series. It's a two-day virtual event on March 22nd and 23rd, and for our Australian friends, March 23rd and 24th. You'll learn how to qualify and convert prospects into clients like never before. Plus, you'll discover the power of value pricing, including how to create pricing packages that truly represent your monetary worth. There will be great session leaders such as value pricing experts Ron Baker and Mark Wickersham and Accelerate to Advisor founder Lisa Campbell. It's a workshop series you don't want to miss. So register now at thesuccessfulbookkeeper.com forward slash value. That's thesuccessfulbookkeeper.com forward slash value. You'll be glad you did. Thank you for hearing from our partners who helped make this show possible. Now, let's get back to the interview. Wow, it it really does. I mean, it, it makes life, I'm sure, a lot more enjoyable when you've mastered these types of skills. It brought up the thought of, you you know, you're, you're doing your thing. You've lived your life up to this point, uh, done some remarkable things. You're working now with your father and you're bringing all of those experiences into this business. I'm sure there's a listener out there that has working with family or working in a similar situation. 
How has that relationship been where you're bringing probably a lot of thought around technology, those sorts of things, doing business a different way? Has there been any challenges with the way the business has been and, and will become? There's definitely challenges. So one thing that's nice about the accounting profession is that accountants and lawyers, for the most part, were always ahead of the curve on adopting new technologies. I actually remember when when my father computerized his office, probably in the early 80s, um, they, there was a computer in the office. We even had a computer in my home probably before I was in middle school which is very unusual for somebody in my generation. I'm, I'm generation X and I'm among the older of the generation Xers out there. So having a computer in the home in the, in the mid eighties was not exactly commonplace. So he is somewhat adaptable to technology changes and, and business changes as well. There's certain aspects to it that that I will admit, and he would agree with me, that there are struggles. He's still hardcore paper and pencil. The paperless office is in existence for us. It's not It's not its, its full capacity yet. I, I would say in part because he's comfortable that way. And you, you don't really want to change somebody who's comfortable doing what they're doing. Certainly, I can use cloud-based accounting software, whether it's Xero, which is my preferred choice, or QBO, but we still have people that use QuickBooks Desktop. We still have people that send us their work once a year, and he's happy using a spreadsheet or paper whenever he has the ability to do it. So we, we do have debates over issues like that. He understands, though, that ultimately the the full paperless full cloud based office where remote work opportunity is round the clock is is really the future for this business it just doesn't have to get there while he is still still working and i have no intention of making him retire i consider myself very fortunate that i get to learn from somebody who has well over 55 years of experience you can't replace that and not everybody gets to learn from somebody like that. So there's, there's both the plus side and, and the minus side when it comes to that. And the pluses far outweigh any of the, any of the minuses. And the other thing I tell people is I get to spend more time with my dad in a week than most people get to spend with a parent in an entire year whether it's because they live far apart from one another, or even if they live down the street, people's lives get busy. And I know when I was in corporate America, if I was spending a handful of days with my dad throughout the year, that was probably saying a lot. And we only live two miles from each other. So I literally spend more time with him in a week than I probably used to spend with him in a year. And you can't really trade that. Amen to that. That is uh, beautiful to hear, and not not all can say that when they even when they do spend all of that time together. It sounds like you have a a really great relationship with your father, and and I know that'll be cherished for the rest of your life, and and likely for the the rest of your grandchildren's his grandchildren's lives. So, always love hearing those stories, and you know, at the end of the day, why we do what we do is is often to get to that. And so when you can have it today and all the time, as much as you can, it uh, it's a blessing. It really is a blessing. And I always remind our community, our listener, to not forget about why you're doing what you're doing. It's to be able to have more freedom, more money, more fun, to spend with people like uh, your dad, the people you love in your life. So you're, you've mixed it in with your business and you're doing a, a good job of it. Uh, lovely to hear. I'd like to get, get into the question of, you know, Accelerate to Advisor. You joined that program with Lisa Campbell. Many of our listeners have participated in her programs or actively involved in her programs. Curious what had you take a look at that and then become a part of that program? Well, it was actually listening to the Successful Bookkeeper podcast. You had mentioned it in one of your podcasts. I don't remember if it was the one in which she was interviewed or in a, a different one. And I, and I also remember there was a post where you had a page 
that that took their I think it was a link that took us to her page to sign up for it. So I took a flyer on it. I wanted to see what it was about. I I had listened to plenty of people on the successful bookkeeper and it seemed like that might be in line with my thought process and it might actually get me there faster than what I was capable of doing on my own. So once I signed up for her master class, I I knew I had uh, as I think she says it this way, I, I had found my tribe. I, I realized that these were the people that were doing exactly what I wanted to be doing. And it was a, a faster route than trying to figure it all out for myself. I love that. And that's what I often hear. And, and so how has that been for you? How has it helped you on your journey? It's helping immensely. The, the, the biggest thing I think it's doing for me actually is giving me the confidence to go out there because coming into this as a second career, I, I did have a lot of that imposter syndrome where I felt like maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe I don't know everything I need to know. Maybe I don't have enough knowledge to impart upon people to justify the fees that I want to get paid for it. And working with Lisa and her team and all of the wonderful people that are in her program, I, I realized that I'm not an imposter and I do have something valuable to offer to people. And I can get the fees that I should be getting for somebody that can bring really valuable experience to somebody's small business. I think that's that's the best thing that I can say that I'm taking away from it. Aside from all the lessons that she's giving us about how to how to structure our business, how to bring on the right people when it's time to bring new people on, how to have processes built in place, which obviously includes the pure bookkeeping system. That that is all fantastic knowledge, and I'm glad that I'm there. But I think I think it's the confidence that I'm getting the most from. I love to hear it. You know, it's it's called the Accelerate to Advisor, and and uh, another name for it would be Accelerate to more freedom, more fun, more money, <laughs> because you know essentially that's the promise of you know when you get into business, you want to have more freedom to do the things that you like to do to drive your own future. You many want to have more money, not just to have money, but to be able to do the things that you want to do, build the business you want to do, have the the, the, the things in your life for your family and all that good stuff. And then as well, a lot of people like that, enjoy it, right? Have fun doing it, make that it's, you know, fulfilling on your passions. And, and so many business owners don't have that experience. And so it's always wonderful to hear a program like this, uh, is helping you get there with all the bits and bobs that you would need systems process you know the know how the the you know everything you could need to actually go and build it the tools to go and build that business of your dreams but the big differentiator and it's all over the you know you hear it all the time the big differentiator is the people the people you surround yourself with is if you want to get somewhere Find the people who are on the way there and go hang out with them and you are going to increase your likelihood of getting there exponentially, not only uh, in terms of uh, speed, but also in terms of your enjoyment uh, of, of getting there as well. You, you're also a peer bookkeeping licensee. How has that been helping you? So it's interesting because when I, when I talked to my dad about it, he he looked at it and he said, you know, I used to do this kind of stuff where I would have processes in place and it wasn't necessarily always documented. A lot of it resided in his mind, but a lot of it was already there. He spent so many years working on his own that he really never needed to, to codify any of it or, or put it into, into some sort of paper or digital format where somebody else could turn around and read it. So when I showed this to him, he said, well, that's interesting. He said, that's, that's really the way this is supposed to get done. It's the way I did it when I was in a big firm. It's the way I did it back, you know, when you were younger and I had employees working for me, but over the last 25 plus years, I've been on my own and I didn't really need to have any of that. So it, it, it really is putting into, into a physical format 
exactly what we should be doing so that I can eventually bring somebody else in because when he does retire, it's going to leave a hole because right now we're doing work between the two of us and maybe I can fill that blank all by myself, but there's a pretty strong likelihood that I will need somebody to come in, even if it's only on a part-time basis, to fill in the gap that he leaves. So having having something like pure bookkeeping in place will enable me to transition that work over to somebody else with a set of instructions that they can then jump right in and not really require a lot of additional guidance from, from me in order to get the jobs at hand done. Remarkable and so true. And you're also, you mentioned Zero. that's your preference when it comes to accounting software. And you're working on the translation of the Zero manuals for the United States. What's that experience been like? So that's actually been the game changer for me because initially when I came into the program, I was trying to translate from QBO into Zero. Anyway, so it was actually slowing me down a little bit because I had to first process in my mind, this is how I do it in QBO. Now I have to bring it over to zero. So I was really rewriting everything anyway. And now as I'm going through the process of rewriting it as part of your team, it's actually speeding up my process of implementing. So I can actually implement each piece as I write it and have somebody else helping me test it. So it's not just me, myself, and I working on it and hoping that I have it right. I'm actually part of a group of people that are looking to build this out so that other people can benefit from it after it's completed. So true, so true. And it's great to have you a part of that. It's uh, It's been long coming and it is interesting. I mean, I, I'm always curious to hear why you you prefer zero what what is it about zero that has you like it so much i think it's my it background so philosophically intuit and zero have taken different approaches to solve the same problem intuit's approach is that they want to own every piece of it which is why you see them buying up even companies that you wouldn't think of like mailchimp to bring into the fold for them because they want to become that all encompassing solution for what a business needs in order to run. And that works. I I came from a world of ERP systems. So part of my career involved implementing PeopleSoft, which initially was an HR system that grew to encompass HR, benefits, benefits administration, payroll, time and labor, finance, everything that you could need to run a business. And what I learned from that was that while you can be good at it, you can't necessarily be great at being that all-encompassing solution. And that's why PeopleSoft was ultimately bought out by Oracle. Now with Zero, I think they have taken the approach where they view themselves as more of a platform. They're the general ledger solution and they're good at it. And while they have a couple of other components that they've bought up and added into it, like HubDoc, for example, for receipt capture, They don't necessarily look to drive everything as being owned by them. And I can choose the right applications to fit in through their API structure to to work within what a business specifically needs. So take an e-commerce business, for example. I can I can take zero and patch in to Shopify using something like A2X. Now I could do that in Intuit also, but into its model is they're going to try to build in, they're actually trying to build in what Shopify does. I, I forget which platform they ultimately bought. I think it was big commerce, but they've actually bought the competitor to Shopify in order to be that all encompassing solution. But not everybody wants to be on into its solution. They may look at it and say, my product or service will sell better if I use Shopify or Amazon or eBay. So I like philosophically the notion of I can build out the best of breed for everything that I need for a business to succeed, as opposed to I can buy everything from Intuit and have that all in one solution. So interesting. Very, uh, very interesting take on it. And 
that you believe it's a, a really great ledger system. Uh, are there any components to that that have you feel that way? I think that what makes it work is there's really limitations on what they ask of a business owner to be able to do. So whereas Intuit kind of opens up a lot of the accounting features, even to the business owner, Zero keeps it a little more closed off, especially when you work with a Zero partner. So the way I set my clients up is that I really only give them access to the three basic functions that they need. They can either be receiving money, spending money, or transferring money. They don't need to have access to make journal entries. They don't need to have all of these higher end functions. They don't need to be setting up their chart of accounts. So I try to take away as much of the burden of accounting from them as I possibly can, because at the end of the day, they don't care about debits and credits. They care about how their business is performing. They care more often than not about their bottom line. Sometimes they'll look at their top line. So they're looking at their revenue. They're looking at what they have left after they pay their expenses. It's really not until I talk to them a little further that they start to understand that there's more to it. There's what's on your balance sheet. What does your cash flow look like? Where can you make investments that are succeeding against those that are not succeeding? So coming from that marketing background, we always looked at what our return on investment was. We always knew that if we spent a thousand dollars on advertising space, we understood how much money we were going to get out of it. We the 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 clearest version I have of this is one that people don't expect because a lot of times when you advertise on radio and television, you can't really tell what you're doing. So when I worked at an e-commerce company, we would advertise on a radio program. And what we would do is we would actually watch our servers. When the commercial would air, we would see a massive spike in traffic. So we knew that the ad was having impact. And then we would track to see what our sales looked like from that spike and how it looked against the rest of the day. And you could literally watch it spike for about a 10 minute period after the commercial aired. It would start at 10 before the commercial, bounce up to 50, and then be back down at 10 within 10 minutes. It was, it was just a typical cone shaped spike. And, and that's the kind of thing I want to see when, when I make something happen. So interesting. So interesting. Uh, I, I imagine this episode could go on and on, and we'll definitely have you back to talk more about your journey and your business, more about your journey with Zero as well. Bruce, you, you've mentioned the Accelerate to Advisor program. For our listeners, there'll be a link. Uh, I know Lisa is always running uh, free and wonderful programs to to get introduced to what she's doing. So we'll put that link in there. Uh, before we say goodbye, is there anything else that you'd like to share with our listen listener who are perhaps trying to solve something new in their business like you've been doing so, so much along the way here? Well, since you brought up Lisa again, I, I can't recommend enough for people to check out her mastermind class. She gives away a tremendous amount of information for free during those sessions. And a lot of it is exactly what we do in the program. The program is really just allowing us to put our foot on the gas pedal. So a lot of the information that we get in the program, she's giving it out right in there. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't sign up for her program. If you think it's a good fit for you, you absolutely should because it will it will speed up your your process of getting there infinitely. I can't even describe how much faster it is to get there when you're part of her program. The The other thing I would say is I think in a lot of ways, my story ties into just dreaming about what you want and then driving to get there. I, I liken it to the process that I have my younger daughter going through right now with applying to colleges. And, and I steal a little bit of a quote from from Wayne Gretzky on this one because I'm an ex-athlete myself and I always loved this quote and he he said that you miss a hundred percent of the shots that you don't take so when it came time to apply to college I I told my daughter I said listen let's not worry about the money aspect of it just apply to the schools that you find appealing because 
you know for a fact that you're not going to get accepted if you don't apply. But if you apply to a school that has even just a 7% acceptance rate from their applicant pool, which is what some of them have, you know you at least have a 7% shot of getting in there. And really, in my worldview, you have a 50-50 shot because you either applied or you didn't apply. If you didn't apply, you miss. If you applied, you're, you have two options. You get accepted or you don't get accepted. So let's take the 50-50 shot and put your name on the application and do it. And I think that's what I did. I think I took a gamble on myself. I went to school. I, I dreamed about what I wanted and I managed to get there. And now it gives me choices in this world. I can choose to spend as much time with my family as I, as I want. And they have been and always will be my priority. And I can spend as much time on my business as I want. And coming up on being an empty nester, I probably have more time than most to focus on the business because the kids don't need me as much anymore. This, the days of athletics is over. One is already in college. The other will be in college next year. So really, they only call me when they need help on their accounting homework <laughs> or they need money in their bank account or tech support. Those are the three things that they really call me for. And then occasionally I get the call to just say hi. So I, I think that's, that's what you have to focus on in this world. I think your time, your time is valuable and you need to spend it in the ways that, that you really enjoy. I love it, Bruce. Dream big, take the actions that are in front of you to take and, and keep on going. What an inspirational episode. And of course, we'll have links where uh, our listener can learn more about you and connect with you in our show notes. And Bruce, this has been a tremendous opportunity. Thank you on behalf of our listener for your generosity in coming and sharing about your life story, your business journey, and some of the, the things that you're doing that are working. It's been fantastic. Thank you very much, Michael. It's been a pleasure being here today. And with that, we wrap another episode of the Successful Bookkeeper Podcast to learn more about today's wonderful guest and to get access to all sorts of valuable free business building resources you can go to, thesuccessfulbookkeeper.com. Until next time, goodbye. You've been listening to The Successful Bookkeeper with Michael Palmer. For more information and to download the resources mentioned in this episode, please visit us at thesuccessfulbookkeeper.com. Thank you for listening.